Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to be showing you the way I like to narrow down my photos to only the best ones in Lightroom. Now, the way we do this is through a process called culling. Basically what that is, is we're selecting out the photos we want to keep and getting rid of the ones that we don't. And this sounds pretty simple, but it's actually probably my least favorite part of being a photographer. I would rather do anything else but cull. In fact, I tend to procrastinate this as much as possible. I recently went through and probably did about three months worth of culling that I should have caught up with. Uh, and it took me, I'd say, 10, 15 hours to get through all of that, uh, just because it's such a miserable process. But uh, I'm going to go through the way that I like to do it to make it as fast and not miserable as possible. So the first thing I want to do is give myself a larger space to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and select this window here to go to the loop view. And then I'm going to click these arrows on the sides to just collapse it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and hit left and right to go back and forth through the photos. And then I'm going to hit X to flag a photo as rejected or the tilde key to flag it as pick. And picks are the ones we're going to keep uh, rejected are the ones we're going to get rid of. And you might be asking yourself, what the hell is a tilde key? Well, that is the squiggly little line key that's right above your tab key. And I didn't know that, I had to look up what it was called because I had no idea that was the actual name of it. Okay, so starting off, we're gonna just go ahead and flick through these and select the ones that we like. And I'm not sure how I feel about this one, so I'm gonna flag it as a reject. And anyone that you like just aren't feeling or you're not sure of, you can flag as rejected. And I wasn't feeling that one, so I'm going back. And this is, really kind of a slow process uh and it's really long and like i said it's my f least favorite part and like uh, i actually really hate doing a video on this but uh kind of a necessary thing to do this and i figured you guys might be able to learn something so in order to go through these faster i've rendered one-to-one -one previews so that way it loads quicker while i'm doing this Every now and then I'll flick back, but typically I like to trust my gut instinct when it comes to culling and just, if I didn't like it the first look, I'll get rid of it. Um, but if it was like something like that where I'm like, not sure, like, oh, did I really not like that? Or was it just like I was going too fast? Yeah, this is like seriously the most boring thing ever and i'm sorry i'm subjecting you to this video but i figured like i said it would be useful to some people so i'm just continuing to flick through here rating the ones i want and you will see i did not call through these beforehand these are still there's the out of focus shots there are shots that i don't like the posing there are shots that the model has a strange expression or it's not uh, exactly what i'm looking for and I did not do any pre-screening of these, so you're gonna see a lot of mistakes and you're gonna see that I am not perfect. I am far from it. What I post on my Instagram is far from the normal amount of shots I take. Uh, to be honest, I usually only edit five to 10 images per shoot, uh, just because I shoot so often, it's hard for me to keep up with it. And I spend so long on editing, I'd say 30 minutes to three hours per edit. So it gets really time consuming really fast if I'm editing like 10, 15, 20 images from one shoot. It uh, can really become a pain. So uh, I like to narrow it down as much as possible to only the best images. Uh, that one's actually not bad. Like I said, every now and then I will change my mind on a photo, but uh, typically I tend to try to go with my gut reaction to something. And I am just having a whole bunch of rejects in a row here.
And this has just been a whole lot of silence so far because there's really not much for me to talk about. I mean, I guess I could be talking about what I'm seeing that I'm not liking uh, when I mark it as a reject or a pick, but it's like, it, it's such a gut instinct at this point. It's like just such a uh, pain that I'm trying to do it as fast as possible. Um, and I, I really don't want to have to talk about all my decisions and why I'm making them. Uh, usually the first half of a session is usually not that great. And then once we actually get warmed up and the model and I get used to each other, we start to get a much better, uh, result. And there be tends to be more keepers just because we're starting to get into a flow and everything's like kind of working and I'm able to hit the angles I want a little easier and get the directions and posing. Uh, actually, it's not bad. It's just the color temperature that threw me off. But once you've been shooting for a while, you tend to uh, get into a little bit of a groove together and the model starts to take your direction better and you start to give it better so they know what you want and they can kind of hit it a lot easier. And you start to learn the angles of their face and it really just becomes easier to get a uh, more pleasing result. And you'll notice it was right about here was where we started to kind of hit our groove and I'm getting a lot more selects out of it. I kind of like that one. I'm trying to think of things to say here to make this a little less boring, but, uh, you know, it, it's, there's nothing I can say. It's a boring, boring process and talking about it is equally as boring. So I'm just going to let you kind of watch the process. I might even speed this up and post. I haven't decided yet, uh, just to kind of get the point across. So we're going to just keep kind of going through this. Flagging the ones we want, the ones we like, rejecting the ones we don't. Hmm. Man, I've had a few here that I've rejected and then just changed my mind like immediately after. That one's not even in focus, so that's a definite no. Here I was trying something different. I had uh, seen a few photos the day before where people used grading of a fence to frame the model and I was like hmm I can try something like that when I saw this location and uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet uh, there are a few that I'm liking so far but for the most part this is 
a pretty far cry from my usual style. I actually really like that shot. I might do something with that in the future. Uh, but like I was saying, it's, it's a pretty far cry from my usual style. Uh, but I figured, you know what, if you don't experiment, you never know uh, what you might uh, come up with. And here I decided that I was going to focus more on the front of the hand instead, just because I wanted to see I actually like both of those, even though they're very similar. I'm just not sure what kind of crop I want to do, so I'm going to keep both options just in case I decide I would like to uh, try a different crop or I want to play with it in a way that the uh, only having one would restrict it. So, And I, I'm going to keep this video probably roughly unedited, so every now and then I might say something wrong or speak in a strange way and I'm probably just going to leave it just because I do not feel like editing a shitload tonight. Because editing these videos takes forever. I'm not sure if you guys know that, but uh, I uh, have been up many nights till 4 a.m. or later trying to finish an edit so I can have something to share to YouTube the next day. And it's it's not worth it. I actually like that one. And you'll notice uh, I actually took some horizontal photos. Uh, I'm sure you've also noticed I probably only shoot vertical in the beginning of this, and that's because I typically just, I prefer the way portrait orientation looks. Uh, it's called portrait orientation for a reason, you know? Uh, but honestly, it's uh, something, it's a habit I'm trying to break. I'm trying to get more into shooting horizontal just because I need more of that kind of style for my portfolio. Um, just because I don't do it a lot, and I don't want it to be seen as a weakness, uh, in case the client uh, who's looking for something would like a larger, uh, wider scene. So I'm trying very hard to break myself of that habit and start incorporating more environmental type shots. And these are, of course, some of my favorite images towards the end here because we finally got in that groove and just nailed a few really great looks. So we are actually done with the initial call here. That's the end of the session. So what we do next is we go ahead and select here. And then I have a special thing where I have it set up for rejected as a preset. But what you can do is go here to this area here on filter and then select, not that, that's unflagged. Um, and you might want to actually do that first is go ahead and select unflagged and see if you missed any because I did and oh, I did not mean to flag that as reject. I actually like that. Uh, kind of like that one. I'm going to definitely want to change the cropping on it, but okay. So now what we want to do is we want to select this one here and this is to going to bring up all of our rejected files and I am very, uh, I'd say selective. So if I rejected it once, I'm not going to go through and look again. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit control a, and that's going to select all of it, highlight it, right click, go to remove photos. And then I'm going to hit delete from disc. And that's going to just not only remove them from Lightroom, you'll see the bar going here. It's also going to take the files off my hard drive and put them into the recycling bin so that I can clear them out later and just get rid of them. And uh, honestly, it, it's more like if I didn't like it the first time, chances are I'm not going to like it looking back. And I've never had a situation where I'm like, man, I really wish I would have saved that photo because you usually forget about it. And honestly, if you didn't like it at first glance, no one's going to like it at first glance. So I'm going to go ahead and go back here to 
my flagged photos and we can actually just remove the filter and just go to no filter and now it's only going to be photos we flagged and you'll see we narrowed it down a lot but what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and go through it again and I'll usually either put a rating on the photo that I like or I will uh, put a color flag on them so what you can do is you can either hit uh, numbers one through three five on your keyboard will change the ratings of your photos and then if we go ahead and clear that set the rating back to zero six we'll label it red seven will label it yellow eight will label it green nine will label blue and then i believe you have to hit it again to remove it you can't hit zero to zero it out like you can with the stars so if we wanted to say put separate categories so like say I want to know what selects I have that are a full body image uh, I would toggle back and forth I think I like this one more so I'm gonna go ahead and say like I said full body image we'll do seven for yellow as you see down in the film strip here that now has a yellow border around it and let's say we want to do green for our headshots I'll hit seven and for full body, if we want to do another color, we'll do nine for blue. So now what that enables us to do is we can kind of just quickly look at it and see like, okay, here's a half body shot. Here's a head shot. Here's a full body. And it just makes it a little quicker. But honestly, I don't really use that too much. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these labels. And we're just going to go through and select what we want. And usually what I'll do is I'll just flag something as red by hitting six or I will put a four or five star on it. I used to do stars but then I started doing red because what I do is I make my main selections of what I think is a good uh, candidate for editing and I go ahead and I put a uh, red flag on it and then I will actually go and rate the ones when I edit them. I'll give them a four star rating when I edit and then if I have a PSD, I'll rate it a five star. So that way I can easily sort through of, okay, where's this raw file that I edited or where's this PSD of the edited file? I just find it a little bit easier to do it that way. I suppose you could do the same thing with stars and then colors for the ones you've edited or raw files you've edited. But for me, this is just the way I like to do my workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through this now and I'm actually gonna talk about why I'm choosing certain things this time. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I like the pose better on this one. I think it's just a little more natural and I like the angle of her face better. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one uh, as I did earlier. Uh, I decided I really actually don't like that. So I'm going to actually go ahead and reject that uh, and I'll get that later just because I've decided I just don't like it. Um, I like that photo still, but there is the tree kind of like going through her head, which is a little distracting. I like the over the shoulder look. I'll give that a red. Going through, I don't think that one is as strong as the other. I like the angle of her head, I like the pose. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that red. I like that one, I think, better. So, I like the pose, I like the expression. I think it looks good, I'm gonna mark that red. Same with that one. Uh, it's okay. There's better, I think. I'm noticing the hand positioning is a little awkward, so I don't really want that one. Um, I don't think I want to edit either of those, honestly. Um, and I mean, if if I wanted to, I could further narrow this down and delete the ones that I don't mark red, but that would like leave me with only a few photos left from an entire session, and I'd rather not uh, not have any options to work with. I would like to be able to change my mind later on, um, which I, I said earlier, I don't want to change my mind too much with the initial rejects, but these ones, I don't want to do a second pass and then decide like, oh, I don't like that, and then not... Um, have the files later because these ones I actually did like the first glance. And it seems my Lightroom kind of froze up there. Uh, 
I love the background, but I just am not feeling this. I, I might edit that one. I'm going to go ahead and put red on that. Um, no. I actually kind of like that expression. Um, it's a little bit different than my usual work. It's kind of off center, but I don't know. Something about that image just kind of makes me like it. So I'm going to go ahead and flag it just in case. Just because it gets a red flag doesn't mean that I'm going to actually edit it like I've stated a little bit ago. Uh, typically, I will rate the image after if I decide I do want to edit it and I actually do go through with it. Oh, those are so close. So I think I'm going to go with this one just because we don't have that red speck there in the background, which I know it seems like such a minor thing, but uh, I'd rather not have to take care of that in post later. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that one and remove the red from this. Like that. Love that one. And I like that one. Okay, so now that we have all these narrowed down, what we can do is we can easily be able to go to the filter bar here and check the red box. And then that narrows it down to only the photos that we thought, hey, maybe I want to edit this. And you'll see we're down to 27 photos. And that was out of 125 that we selected out of, I think, four or 500, something like that. So we narrowed it down from four or 500 to 27. So I hope I didn't bore you guys to death today. This is a really important thing. It's just a very painful and unfortunate side of being a photographer. As I said, it is my most hated thing. And if I could pay someone to do it or use a computer program that would just know exactly what I wanted, I would do it in a heartbeat because this is such a drag. But I hope you guys enjoyed seeing a little bit of how I do this just because this is what I find to be the best way to do it for me. It's what it makes it go the fastest and what helps me narrow it down the best. So if you were able to learn something today, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. Feel free to share this on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.